Good morning, welcome to Dip and Works YouTube channel. I'm now on my way home to finish a test that I've come up with of trying to find what you can get for £250 in the second hand speaker market. Now, the reason I've selected £250 is you'd struggle to find something really good these days for £250 brand new. When I first got into hi-fi, a budget bookshelf speaker would probably have been somewhere between 60 and 90 pounds, like a Wharfdale Diamond or a Celestium One or something like that. And the prices have just continually risen, even in the entry-level world. And I'm not talking about a pair of speakers you get with a MIDI system. You could probably pick something like that up for about 10 quid, but it's not gonna be very good. There are drawbacks with buying speakers from the second-hand market, reliability, condition, how have they been used, do they have the original packaging, how old are they, are spare parts available, all of these things do weigh heavy on your mind when you're thinking about buying a second hand pair of speakers. If you're buying a new pair you don't have to worry about any of that of course, but I don't think you'd get a lot for £250 brand new these days, I really don't. You've got to imagine even though the manufacturers say their technologies will trickle down to the entry level, do they? Do they really? What are you getting for £250 these days? Well, I've found some speakers that would fall into the sub-£250 category. Something you could find on eBay, Gumtree, Facebook Marketplace. Those types of arenas that would crop up and fall well within that £250 price bracket. So what did I find? I found a pair of Spendor SP2 Mark 1s and I found a pair of Monitor Audio Monitor 1s. So this is a bit of a David and Goliath test. You've got something that's what I would consider a very large two-way stand mount speaker and something that I would consider a very small two-way bookshelf stand mount speaker. So let's get in, we'll have a look at them and we'll have a listen to them and see how they would compare or what my thoughts are, how would they compare to something modern that you could potentially buy for around 250. Okay, this is the first of the two speakers that I found to fall within this sub 250 category. I have to admit, you would be lucky to find these sub 250, but it can be done. So these are the first pair, the Spendor SP2 Mark I. I've put them next to my SP2 IIs, which is the Mark II version, just to show there are only subtle differences really. So this is an earlier revision of the ScanSpeak tweeter. Uh, this has three screws holding it in rather than four. And this textured material, which must be something to do with dispersion, is not present on this one. This is an earlier revision of that base driver as well. It's got five screw holes holding it in instead of eight. Um, I did initially worry that the, void, the dust dome was missing, but these earlier ones don't have it. They don't have one, so there's no issue if you see a pair without the dust dome. The later pair do have dust domes. The foam wadding is a little bit more rudimentary on the Mark I. This is a much neater affair. This looks like a, a, a strip that's been rolled and then put in there. There is some sun bleaching on the cabinets, which is easily rectified by just putting the grills back on, because I've got to admit, both pairs aren't the most attractive speakers in the world with the grills off. So I don't mind running them with the grills off, but if you want that waff, leave the grills on. Um, really nice cabinets. Dimensions are identical between the two. According to the um, specifications, these should be run on 45 centimeter stands. Mine are 43 with the plimps is about 45. And in all honesty, they are a typical Spendor sound. They're very pleasant on guitar music, classical music, jazz, that kind of thing. And I think if you found a pair sub 250, you'd get a bargain because the modern equivalent of these from Spendor or from Harbeth or from Graham Audio are thousands of pounds. And yes, modern technology, modern drivers are in there and they'll be more reliable. You will know the history of them if you've bought them brand new, which as I was saying earlier, is the trouble with a second hand market is you don't know how it's been treated. But if you buy them off an honest seller like I have, I'm the third person to have owned these. I'm the second person to have owned them. So often you can find the history of them and if they're in good condition like these, you know they haven't been chucked around. 
If you find an incredibly tatty, knocked around pair of speakers, they've not been well looked after. They've probably passed through multiple different people, been on multiple different systems, potentially underdriven or overdriven. So these, let's have a listen to the sound because I think they sound quite good. So as one would expect, on classical music, Spendors sound absolutely fantastic. I have had a good listen to these this morning, they sound brilliant on jazz. The difference between the two, and bearing in mind you'd be really lucky to get a pair of these sub 250, they're more around 350 to 450. The difference between the Mark II and the Mark I, these are slightly warmer sounding, probably a little bit more balanced. These have a sweeter top end. So if you, if you like the real details from the strings, these actually present that a little bit better. The bass is a little bit better on the Mark II than the Mark I, but really they're pretty close. It's typical with a Mark II version. They've probably adjusted it to potential feedback that they got from customers or from retail outlets that there might have been something people didn't like about this that they've rectified with that. It's possible that Derek Hughes rectified it himself because there was something he didn't like about these because they're both his designs. So let's have a look at the second pair of speakers. And this is ridiculous. That is them. The Monitor Audio Monitor One. And they're a quarter of the size. These are actually smaller than LS35As. They're smaller than the A Compacts. The A Compacts are just a tad shorter but a lot deeper and way more. So we'll set these up on stands and see how something this small compares. Okay, these are the Monitor Audio Monitor Ones. Another British mini monitor and these really are, in all sense of the word, a mini monitor. They are actually smaller than LS35As, they're slightly taller than Celestian A Compacts but they're not as deep. Um, I've put them on my target 60 centimeter stands I've had a listen to these and again on classical music, jazz, guitar music like this here, they are very sweet sounding speakers. They obviously don't have the low end of the spendors, the depth, but imaging is fantastic. A narrow baffle speaker always images very well. They time particularly well, they're fast, small drive units, and the design in these, these tweeters are not bright. They, they couldn't be. If these were bright with a drive unit that size, they'd be awful to listen to. And this tweeter is quite rolled off. It's quite pleasant. It's very crisp, but it's pretty rolled off. And I quite enjoy how they sound. Rear ported, so they have got some bass, but not loads and loads of bass. But if you bear in mind again, the modern equivalent of something this size costs thousands of pounds. There are other speakers out there at this price point that would beat them on other types of music, so Q acoustics, things like that, you can get those sub 250, and they would sound better on dance music, rock music, modern music, definitely. But for jazz, classical music, easy listening or near field listening as well, if you have these on a desk beside a computer, potentially if you wanted a bit more bass, you could always add a sub. I don't ever run subs, but these are not bad at all. Fantastic, in good condition. Let's have a listen to them. Thank you. 
bad at all. Let's try them with something a little bit more modern. Let's see what they how they deal with something that's got a little bit more going on. Let's have a listen to this. deal with something a little bit more complicated quite well to be honest with you I think these would fall over on electronic music or dance music um, I'll give them a try later and see what they sound like but I'm pretty impressed as with all things if you go from an enormous pair of floor standing speakers to something like this they're gonna sound pretty thin pretty small they're not gonna have a lot of scale they're not gonna be particularly dynamic but if you let your ears adjust you'll be pleasantly surprised with some small speakers and like I said earlier to find something this small that does a sort of acoustic kind of music really well, you'd have to pay a lot of money. The same as you would with the Spendors. The modern equivalents of some of these older speakers are horrifically expensive. Now, if we all stopped buying modern speakers and just all bought second-hand speakers, then the manufacturers would go bust. We wouldn't be able to buy anything new. So I'm not saying don't buy something new, but if you're cautious, really do a bit of research, and buy from a buyer who's looked after their stuff, like I do and many of my friends do, you'd be pleasantly surprised at what kind of speakers you could find for £250 or less. There are speakers out there that you can find for ridiculously cheap. Celestian DL4s, somewhere about £40 I've seen those go for. Celestian 3s, £60. They're fantastic speakers, I reviewed them on Facebook a long time ago. There are lots and lots and lots of other little speakers out there that do the job really well. There's lots of old speakers out there that do the job really well. I just thought it would be interesting to see what I could find sub 250 and both of these fell within that category. Both are very different and both are very enjoyable to listen to. Anyway guys, that's my review for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care.